Leadership looks different for simple change or incremental change or what's called first order change than it does for big change, paradigm shift or uh, second order change. The leader's job is to support the troops, right? Build a common language, build a common culture, resources. What can I do for you? How can I help maintain the vision? Hey, we're doing a great job. Now, that's first order change. That would be something like bringing in a new program that everybody agrees with. Okay, a slight change in the schedule that everybody agrees with. Second order change is when all of a sudden they have to do things that are out of the box. And here's where you get into trouble. Just human nature not to like to change too much. We have an aging workforce in terms of uh, teachers. And you know, there's no two ways of not being a bad person when you don't want to do something new. It's just a matter of, yeah, I've been doing this for 30 years. Now I've got to do something else. Second order change. Well, if you're a leader, here's the bad news. Those are the leadership behaviors that seem more appropriate for second order change. Expect some things to seem worse. Here's what we found. Even if things aren't worse, when you're involved in second order change, there will be people who perceive things like, until you brought that new, now, fill in the blank. I, I, in some schools, a small thing is a second order change. The first time we presented this, I remember a principal saying to me, in my school, buying a new pencil sharpener is a second order change. That's, <laughs> that's scary. You don't want to be there. So before you brought that new pencil sharpener in, or that new PLC stuff, or this new way of dividing, designing rubrics, or you name it, boy, you know, we had input into the decisions that were made. Now we don't, even though that's not the case. Before you brought that new, fill in the blank, okay, we had a common language. Now we don't. Before you brought that new, we had order. Now we don't. Remember Tom showed you the, you know, performance dip? To me, that kind of explains it. If it is second order change, people don't feel comfortable. It doesn't look as good as it did before. Now, if you're a leader, what does this imply? You've got to be able to live through the tough times, really. You have to. And they're going to get tough. And this is an opinion I have. It, uh, I can back it up with nothing other than what I've seen, see if you agree or disagree. In my experience of running around the country for about 30 years now, I've worked in every state at least three times in my design. My favorite thing to do is work with schools and districts. Um, not give talks, that should be obvious. Uh, the, uh, I've come to this conclusion. All it takes for a, to stop a well-designed, well-intended innovation is a handful of unhappy but vocal people, and it will stop it dead in its tracks. So if you're an administrator, and you're saying we're going to change some things here, and there are big changes, it's tough sledding ahead. You might say to yourself, you know, if I can just last five years, I'm going to go fishing the rest of my life. And God bless, you deserve. If you want to go fishing the rest of your life, you know, you do that. There might be another way to look at it, too. You might say, wait a minute. I'm going to draw a line in the sand, okay? And I'm going to now do what I haven't done before that I think has the best chance of enhancing student achievement, even though it might not be popular in the beginning. Oh, thanks. You're in. What's... I'll end on a positive note. What's the worst thing that can happen to you? They fire you and you go fishing anyway. You got it? <laughs>